and make sure we're recording. Okay. And we're just going to let some folks join. We've got five people, seven people. So let's just give everyone a chance to join the webinar. And then we'll get started. And as we have participants coming in, we just want to say welcome and thank you for registering for our webinar titled, Why and How to Become an Environmental Data Scientist. The webinar, the webinar is going to be recorded and emailed, and the recording will be emailed to all registrants. There will be a time at the end of the presentation to ask questions. So please use the Q&A feature to ask questions. This will be monitored throughout the presentation. And on the next slide, you will see I am Dr. Jenny McMath, and I am the Student Success Specialist for the Mall State Master's in Data Science program. Katie Davis is the Coursera Enrollment Counselor for the program. Dr. Ava Lee is the topic presenter. Dr. Lee joined Ball State University in 2021 as an assistant teaching professor of data science in the data science and analytics program. Prior to joining Ball State, she worked as a po she worked as a postdoc at Boise State University and Miami University. Dr. Lee is a trained interdisciplinary geospatial spatial data scientist with expertise in big data analysis and its applications on ecological and environmental sciences. Dr. Lee's research goal is to better address cutting edge environmental and climate issues through analysis modeling and visualization of high volume environmental and climate data at a range of scales. Her teaching interests are introductory and advanced geoscience courses and data analysis, modeling and visualization with big data using geospatial skills, statistic methods and programming. Dr. Lee, we look forward to your presentation tonight, why and how to become an environmental data scientist. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, actually a teaching assistant professor at the Department of Geography and Meteorology and as the data analytics and data science program at Boston State University. I teach courses like uh, data visualization and data um, analytics mastered in R. I'm so happy uh, to be here today uh, with you to share uh, some insights and experience uh, experiments uh, experience from my journey as an environmental data scientist. So in the past 15 years, I have had the, uh, uh, the experience of navigating the intersection of data science and environmental science, studying some of the most uh, crucial uh, challenges in environmental uh, sciences. So actually, to be honest, I once dreamed of being a computer science because I love coding. I started my major with geography information system because it has keyword information. So later it turned out to be a great option as my college major. So also geography studies the relation of human and the environment. My passion for environmental science studies not at the beginning when I was first in the geography uh, field, but when I met Google Earth. Actually, when I first met the Google Earth, I was moved uh, very, a lot by the beautiful blue planet. So the many uh, mysteries that we can explore, that we have, uh, there are some places we don't have the opportunity to visit, the possible findings, uh, we could not be invested otherwise. So actually, 
the more I explored, uh, the more I felt in love with this major. Then I start my journey as an environmental data scientist using a variety of environment uh, data sets at different scales, like the point scale and the global scale uh, to study the, some uh, issues in environmental sciences. So actually we have, here is some example project I have had the fortune to work on along with the leading scientists in the field. I'm very proud of um, of this project I worked on previously about the, like, the sea surface temperature, vegetation dynamics, and the wildfires. So for example, in 2019, I worked as postdoc in the project called uh, FireXAQ. This project actually formerly called like the fire influence in the regional to global environment and air quality. So this is a project uh, led by NOAA and NASA scientists that we investigate the chemistry and transport of smoke from the both the wildfires and pre-script burns during a large scale. So this is a uh, uh, campaign in 2019. I just learned a lot. So actually for this topic, uh, this project is especially about uh, fire. Fire is an important natural event in many ecosystems, but it also uh, poses costly risk to human health and property. So this risk actually have increased in the recent decades, partly due to the shift in the health of a uh, wetland ecosystem and the, uh, the changing climate and the forest management practices. So in recent years, North America has experienced a number of extreme wildfire seasons and um, some very uh, extraordinary or wildfire events. So I think most of us maybe still remember the smoky days last year due to the wildfire um, that along the US-Canada border and the Colorado. So wildfire is just the one example of today's numerous environment problems than under the changing uh, climate. So these environmental issues has a profound effect on social and economic systems, influencing various aspects of human being, human uh, well-being and the societal development. So actually from this graph, we can see Actually, from this graph, we can see uh, some water stresses adaptation to sea level uh, rise and the spread of the uh, the disease, and also even the war due to the competition of limited uh, resources. So we need to act now to reduce the impact of our activities on the climate to protect people and our planet. So. Uh, fortunately, we have a lot of data. We can dig out information and help people better understand and adapt to environmental stresses. But how do we dig out useful information from the massive amount of data, or we can call it big data? So this is where data science can help. Data science is a broad discipline of uh, passing signals from noisy uh, noise retrieving useful information to support our decision making. So as a data scientist, it, a data scientist um, is a professional who can gather, analyze, interpret large sets of structure and unstructured data to help people make informed decisions. So data science is everywhere since it's so broad, is not just uh, in environmental sciences, but also in other areas like health, economics, and social science. So the process of defining questions and then thinking answer for these questions is a fundamental aspect of problem solving and inquiry across various fields. So all the topics in data science uh, are with, includes like, uh, where the data come from? How ethic is the data? Where to store and manage the data? And which field the data can be applied to solve the problem? And also how to analyze and visualize your data. 
So all this process of in data science, we aim to turn big data into big knowledge that can make informed solution. So we can ask, where's the big data come from? So actually we know that data actually uh, can ace every aspect of data science. We know we have different types of data, like the tax information, the traditional uh, tabula uh, tabular data, and also we have so many videos, pictures. So all these different type of data can come from like the social media platform like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, right? So we can get these uh, social uh, data. And also we can have the data come from some smart sensors like uh, cameras, satellites, and also mobile smartphones, and even the drones we use a lot right now. And also we can get some data from the transaction like the online and offline transaction during different kinds of sale. So actually all these kind of different data we mentioned here was just the tip of the iceberg. So actually about 10 years ago, we already mentioned in the World Economic Forum, they mentioned that is the new oil. This mentions that, that how important for our current world. And also to some extent, we can see data is information. In essence, we can say data becomes information when it's processed and uh, processed to convey meaning and significance. So the question is how to retrieve information from data? Oh, we can, in another word, we can say uh, to be a good data scientist, to retrieve useful information, what skill set is required? Becoming a good data science actually requires a diverse uh, skill set. Actually, from this graph, we can see we need some uh, math and statistic knowledge. We need to know a little bit about programming, visualization, and we also have the soft skill that's communication. And we also, if you focus on specific uh, domain, you need to have some domain uh, expertise knowledge. So. When we focus on the domain of environmental sciences, then we come to environmental data science. A major in environmental data science actually equips uh, learners with the analytic skills and domain knowledge necessary to tackle pressing environmental issues, like use the data-driven approaches. So currently the demand for the environmental data scientists actually has been increasing for like uh, increasing interest for the organizations, government, and also industries such like environment consulting and the risk insurance companies. So because we focus a little bit uh, on the environment data science right now, so we can come to see uh, about the environmental data. Previously, we already mentioned a wide variety of the source of data. Now we can see from this, uh, Graph here, we can see we also have a wide a variety of sources for environmental data, uh, data sets. For example, we can have the large volume data collected from by satellite. We can also have the Earth um, uh, monitor system like the uh, weather, uh, weather station and also the monitoring system like the water quality. So this is some data we can collect. And also we can have some field campaign data, like the measurement, uh, measurement and obtained data. And also we have some history uh, records data. This data can be used, especially when you worked on some uh, uh, questions or uh, at the uh, local level. So another thing I, I want to uh, uh, enhance is case data mining. So usually we think data mining is kind of master to uh, to handle the data, right? But the data, the result of data mining can also serve as a kind of the secondary data source for further uh, utilization. We can focus a little bit on the satellite data for environmental data science. So for example, this uh, Earth uh, data, actually this is a uh, home uh, for full and open access to the NASA's Earth Science Data Collection. 
accelerating scientific advancement for societal benefit. So actually we can use a lot of data sets from the Earth's data to conduct the environmental studies. And also we can uh, have another platform called Google Earth Engine. Also provide you multiple uh, pad by category of remote uh, uh, satellite imagery and a geospatial data set. So you can work at the planetary scale analysis uh, to detect the changes, map trend, and the qualified difference on the Earth's surface. So let's come to see this uh this graph, this visualization. So actually, this visualization is about the Arctic ice cap. So we usually as a Every summer, we know the Arctic ice cap melts down to, uh, so the, the scientists call it is a minimum before it's colder weather begins to cause the ice cap to increase. So we call this is a minimum area. So actually you can very easy to see the changes along with the years, right? So the, actually this visualization, you, you can see the year from year on 1979 to 2022, how the annual Arctic sea ice minimum area changed. I want to show you another example. This is example about the forest in our land surface. So this, uh, we worked on this is a um, data set in the Google Earth engine. So we can use the time series of land set imagery. So you can easily to see the, the lost and gain of the forest. So this is the third example about the online mapping of the coronavirus of COVID-19 global cases by the Center of the System Science and Engineering at the Johns Hopkins University. So actually this is for uh, infectious uh, disease, right? We can use the geospatial, like the coordinate information to visualize the spatial distribution of the uh, cases. So actually we can also leverage the file scale, like uh, the satellite data to on the urban area to build a road collection here. You can see here. So we can build a road collection geospatial network. So on this network, we can model the disease spread. So why we give you this example, I just want to show you the what's the possible work in the uh, environment data science and what's the data science applied in uh, environmental science. So I uh, we can see the strengths of the applying data science in the environment. Uh, science, right? We can have very clear visual pattern of some environment uh, uh, phenomena. And also we can conduct the interactive analysis and visualization to uh, help you understand this uh, pattern. And also you, if you are very good at the coding, you can develop like uh, some very useful tool to help some other scientists. They don't need to go start at the very beginning to, for example, here, we have an example to, this is a tool to, you can use to conduct the analysis based on some remote sensing data to can to estimate the carbon or the field bed information. So we can see, and also we can see the data science prov uh, provide we can conduct our research at a variety of scales, like from the uh, like uh, sub region, rich area, or the globe scale. So, actually, if you work um, working as an environment data scientist, you have uh, a lot of uh, career options here, like uh, shows here. So you can study from the entry level, and also you can to advanced level. And especially if you are very uh, per, um, professional at the uh, coding, you can do uh, develop uh, uh, a software develop, especially uh, in environment data science. So actually we know right now we have high 
uh, demand for data science and also high demand for environmental data science. So let's see the, for the data science uh, the jobs. The, this is um this graph shows the in 2020 uh, we get the the top 10 best jobs in America. You can see data science is the third part, right? So it's very popular right now. So because we have a uh, high demand in data science, so this, this is why today today we come here to show you a, a webinar to uh to have you uh go, if you want to start your journey in data science. So actually, according to the U.S. Bureau of the Neighbor Scientists, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, according to the U.S. Bureau of the Neighbor Statistics, we can see the employment rate for data science data scientists will grow uh, 36 from 2021 to 2091. And also for the environmental um, the data scientists are also in high demand because, because they have interdisciplinary experts. They have the ability to code. They also uh, have a critical thinking skill because they have the specific domain training, especially for example, if you are uh, uh, environment data science, you're trained by some specific uh, question in environmental science. So your you can gain your uh, enhance your critical thinking and the problem solving abilities. So this is what we have. We have a uh, multiple uh, actually uh, application inactive courses at both state uh, and Coursera the data science program. You can focus on not just the environment. You can focus on like the social and some like uh, media and science. Right. So also we have different uh uh domain area you can focus on if you have that kind of special uh, passion on that uh, field. And also, uh, according to the uh, Bureau of the Neighbor Statistics, there are about uh, uh, 87,000 uh, environmental scientists employed in the US and with the uh, 7,300 more jobs likely by 2030. So this is something we have the uh, high demand, uh, high demand in the job market. So about what skill required for the environmental data scientist. Actually, previously we mentioned, if you want to be a good data scientist, you have a couple of you have something some skills required, right? We have a skill set you required like the coding. Right, this is kind of called is a, a hard skill, and you have some soft skill like how to communicate and collaborate effectively. This is soft skill, and one more thing I need to talk about is passion. So compared to general data science, you also have passion to data uh, the general data science, right? But I just want to distinguish the environment data science and the general data science uh, scientist uh, a little bit. So you have passion in your environmental sciences. So this is something special for environment data science here. And I, even in this um, talk, I, may, I, I think I talked a little bit more about environmental data science. But I just want to see this is just uh, environmental data science, just a uh, one field in the big area of data science. So starting with the environmental data science provides a um, combination of relevance and interdisciplinary learning, practical experience, and career opportunity. So make it very uh, good entry point into the broader field of data science. So uh, I just want to enhance again. So or, he, or something I talk about the environmental data science is not just only for environmental um, data science, right? You can also focus on some other domains like social data science, business data science. The data science in specific domain can actually can help a lot as I previously mentioned, especially when you uh, attend, uh, if you're trained with the capstone project training, 
especially in our data science uh, program, especially the application in inactive causes uh, at both state and the data science program. We provide a couple of the uh, different domain uh, causes. So can give you the capstone project training to enhance, besides, um, besides learning the uh, program skills and statistic uh, knowledge, you can also enhance your uh, thinking skill and the problem solving ability. Okay, let's come to the last part. I think this is the most important part. So if we, um, if you want to be a very good scientist, what should you prepare for your future? So the first thing I need to stay state current with tools and technologies. Why should we say? Because you know, current the world just uh, changed very fast. The technology changed very fast, especially we know AI. <laughs> so everything just uh, give you a very impressive uh, 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 information and then uh, technologies. So always stay up to date and also focus on continuous learning. So this is the, after this, uh, besides these two parts also, to make your very um to make you successful in the uh in the job uh, market, you also need to master some core concept and build a strong uh uh portfolio and develop soft skill like the communication, how to make a presentation, and stay ethical. This is the one thing I need to see. You just need you collect the data ethically, you process the data ethically. Especially if you are be um, a, a software develop, developer, you want to uh, develop some uh, algorithms, right? Just make sure your algorithm is ethical. Don't, don't have bias there. So also build a network and make a connection. This is very helpful in the job market. Okay. The... Final part is about the general tips learning uh, at both State University and Coursera. So uh, we have very professional and very nice uh, faculties teaching this course, develop this course, use the up-to-date uh, uh, content. And also besides this part, we also want to see when you learn something, just have a progress at your own pace. So like in this course, uh, in my courses, they have soft uh, deadlines for each week uh, small uh, content. But this soft uh, uh, deadline just want to give you a, a remind, okay, we can learn something step by step, week by week. Don't be uh, stayed in the not a few weeks to be overwhelmed. So this is, um, but also you, we have the very firm uh, uh, deadline because we both states, uh, we have firm, like, which is the last day for this semester, right? This is firm due date. So to, um, generally, I just want to say you can progress uh, at your own pace and learn on your own pace. And also practice regularly after, Besides this learning uh, online at Coursera, you also can practice regularly, especially like coding. If sometimes you just uh, leave it there for a couple of months, you may forget a little bit about how to use that. So always do some practice. And of also during the learning, one more thing I think is very important, like the communication. Just commun when you get stuck, when you have confused, you have questions, you have concerns, always communicate with our support team in time. We are, we are, we are always here, I'm very happy to solve all these uh, questions we ha uh, uh, you have. So finally, one more thing, as I already mentioned a lot in previous, we also have the uh, ability to continuous adapt and have lifelong learning and also uh, keep active. Okay, I think this is what I'm going to talk today. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Dr. Lee, for, for sharing that presentation. That was fantastic. Um, as, as mentioned at the beginning, my name's Katie. Some of you may have heard from me or, or chatted with me about the program through Coursera. Um, to tie this in, I'm just going to give us kind of a quick overview of the program in general. If you are interested in learning more or taking next steps with getting started with it, um, this is kind of the, the big picture things to know. Um, it is a, a 33 credit master's degree program, which is 11 courses. Each course is three credits. Um, it is hosted on the Coursera platform, but you are a student at Ball State University. So all of your student administration goes through Ball State. And most importantly, Ball State is who grants your degree at the end of the program. Um, but with it being 100% on Coursera, all of the content is available asynchronously. So there are not set days or times when you have to log in for live lectures. And like Dr. Lee mentioned, you're really kind of able to make your own schedule as you're going throughout the courses themselves. Um, a really unique thing I think about this program for a master's degree is that there is no prior data science background required. So we use what is called performance-based admission for this program. So regardless of your education background, if you are able to successfully complete a series of three initial pathway courses with a cumulative GPA of a 3.0 or higher, then you are officially admitted to the program as a degree-seeking student. So if you're interested in starting, you don't have to worry about ordering your transcripts or writing recommendation letters or, or anything like that. Um, it's, it's a quite simple process to get started. Um, and the total tuition for the program, you can expect it to be less than 17,000. Right, and if you are interested in kind of taking next steps with it, these are the, the time frame to keep in mind. Uh, the next semester actually begins in May. So May 13th is the first day of the summer term. We have enrollment for that actually open now, and the last day to enroll will be May 5th. Um, between now and then, if you would like to get a head start or just check out some content, those are a couple different things that you can do. Um, the first thing is that there is open content on the Coursera platform for two of those initial three pathway courses that I mentioned. Um, so if you just wanna look at it and see what it's about, we have the first five weeks of that unlocked on the platform. So you can even go through and do some quizzes and, and practice and, and make sure that you're prepared. Um, you can also in this program use credit from Coursera certificates to transfer in as credit for prior learning at Ball State in the degree program. Um, so you'll see here listed the Coursera certificates that are eligible for transfer credit into the program. Um, this is something I definitely recommend chatting with us about before uh, to make sure that you are registering for the correct first classes based on the, the certificates that you, you may complete on Coursera. So if you're interested in getting started with uh, the open content or the Coursera certificate work, let's definitely get in touch and we'll be happy to help talk through best next steps there. Um, and I know some people also put questions in the chat. Um, so I am going to go through and I may actually defer back to you, Dr. Lee, on a couple of these if you've had a chance to catch your breath and <laughs> would be willing to, to share some knowledge here. Um, but I'll go through and answer these. And if any more questions come up, um, feel free to throw, throw them in the chat. And I'll also share my contact information um, at the end of this as well, if you do have any follow-up questions. Um, so one of the ones that I think I wanted to start with, which um, may be most specific, um, and Dr. Lee, I will defer to you on this one, um, is about the software that will be taught in the program. Um, would you would you be able to speak to kind of the, the programming languages that students can expect to learn and, and the kinds of um, software specific um, experiences that they would have? Uh, so let's repeat that again. So what kind of uh, program language? So uh, I think was, I just checked the question here. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah, so what, what would be the specific software that would be taught in the program or the, the programming languages that they would use? Um, oh, okay. So that's a very good question. 
So because I teach different courses uh, as Coursera, so so one course actually is is belongs to our online program, data science program, and also belongs to the computer science. This is called um data visualization. So this is using R to this is open software. So we use R to start the uh, learning of data visualization. I know uh like uh in computer science they use uh also have a introduction to programming called the Python. So we still have some uh some other touch like the SAS, this kind of software. So I think um from my opinion, I, I think uh just if you are a master one language uh, in data science, that is very, very good. Because if you already can master one language, program language, that means you have the probability to learn other program language because you already have the program and logic there. So it doesn't matter uh how many you have, but in our program, we're trying to um uh get get you a rich experience to hands-on experience on like R uh SAS and also uh maybe a little bit like the um, uh JavaScript. So 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 from my my opinion to R starting R is a good uh a good way to get you starting in programming if you don't have the uh program uh, experience before because it is relatively is uh easier and also we have very friendly community when you get stuck it's very easy to find the answers uh, so this is something about what kind of language you can learn in our program Perfect. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, this question, I think we addressed a little, but we'll circle back to it. Um, it was about if, uh, if the coursework can be completed asynchronously, and if not, what are the synchronous components? Um, so yes, the coursework can be completed asynchronously. Um, you, you're not expected to log in at any certain time to complete work. The expectation is that most students in this program are, are working professionals and also can be located anywhere in the world. So with that, there's quite a bit of flexibility in terms of time zones and, and scheduling how you'd like to complete your work. Um, and I don't know if, if anyone else has anything that may be helpful to contribute to that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jenny, are you going to? Well, I was just going to say as the student success specialist for the program, this is a rigorous program. So even though it is asynchronous, you want to make sure that you're staying caught up on the workload because you don't want to wait until the end of the semester to catch up because that's not going to help you be successful in the program. Yeah, this is what uh my experience. Just uh, always split the work day by day or waking by week is help a lot, especially when you start if you can start earlier and you can communicate with the staff, uh facilitator, instructor to see, oh I get stuck, what happened? So you can use it to communicate with them to help you to get through all these questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great advice. And this is actually a good follow-up question to that. Um, this uh, question is, I've taken many Coursera programs. However, there's little to no contact with instructors and assignment, assignments are often graded by other students. How much interaction will students have with professors in the program? Mm -hmm. um, would you, Dr. Lee, would, would you mind taking this one and maybe sharing a bit of your perspective as a faculty member? <laughs> yes, of course, I'm happy. So what I always talk to my students, I always say, okay, when you get stuck, especially like coding, so I don't hope you spend 40 hours a week to trying to solve one problem because maybe a problem maybe is big. When you get stuck, you think, oh, it's big for me, but maybe just, a tiny question for some other, especially if they're very good at the program. You can communicate communicate with the classmates and also you can send the emails. 
uh, to the facilitator and the instructors because our course we have the primary instructor and we have the facilitator to help answer all your question. So the answer is communicate with us once you have question. So there's no no limit for your <laughs> request, you know. So just uh, we're always here to help you get you success all these questions. So uh, this is my answer. <laughs> just welcome to contact us. <laughs> Support team, always here. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, all right. This next question, and uh, Dr. Jenny, I may defer to you about this because this is about transfer credit. And if they were to do um, the IBM Data Science Professional Certificate through Coursera, um, what would be the process for them transferring that credit into the Ball State program? So that class or that certificate would be in place of the DSCI 679, which is our research topics in data science uh, course, and it's three credit hours. There is a process. So once you have completed the certificate, you would reach out to me and I will work you through the process to make sure that it's approved and your transcript, uh, Ball State transcript is updated to reflect that change or that transfer credit. Perfect. Yeah. If you, if you enroll in this program, Dr. Jenny will be your best friend pretty quickly. I yes. think <laughs> you will I'll... hear from me so much. You might get tired of me, but <laughs> I, I mean, well, in trying to support you and make sure you succeed in the program. <laughs> well, that's great. Um, okay. This next one is a, a pretty, pretty quick one. How many credits can we take for each semester? Um, so Ball State, and um, feel free to chime in and as well, anyone, but Ball State allows students to register for up to three courses each semester. Mm -hmm. um, they would also, and my understanding is three courses would kind of be considered a, a full-time graduate student course load. So generally, two courses would be the, the expectation unless you're, you're planning to be a full-time student. Katie, you are correct. Three courses max. Yes. All right. <laughs> like to test myself sometimes in front of the, the team here. All right. Um, okay. Our next question here. Um, and, and this may be another one for you, Dr. Lee, do we cover any cloud technologies in MSDS uh, for large data sets or are we using cloud for capstone projects? So I think this is a kind of like cloud computation. So at least in my current courses, like uh, introduction to data science and data visualization. So we're not going to use a uh, cloud computation. So I'm, I'm not sure for some other courses do we have, but I do uh, know in our program, they mentioned we have the computer uh, computation. So especially, uh, so uh, Jenny, do you have any ideas uh, for this? Uh, for this course? As far as the software is consider, or considered, no, you are the expert in that area. I don't. As a student success specialist, I am a liaison to make sure that the students have the resources that Ball State offers to make sure that they are supported and in, in, uh, academically have what they need to be successful in the program. Yeah, actually, um, from my previous uh some research because we provide the online uh calculation like our studio uh online art studio lab this is working on the cloud you don't need to you uh install our studio in or in your local uh drive but you can also work in your local drive so in our case we usually to show you some skills to manipulate the data and the method. We're trying to use the samples data you can handle easily. So I think uh, if the very big data are including like the memory, when your data is very big, the memory how is handled your computer or something, I think it is something like um, complex. But I do believe uh, in our courses, they will mention this part, some other courses. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and this this next question here is about just the the curriculum list. I'm going to throw in the chat uh, the link to the curriculum page on Ball State if you're interested in looking through kind of what all of those full courses are. 
Um, the second part of the question is, would it be a master's in data science or a master's in environmental data science? Um, so the, the degree itself at the end of the program will be a master of science in data science. Um, environmental science is one of the courses that you can take during the program in an area. If you have a passion for it, you can definitely pursue that within the program, but the actual credential would be a, a master of science in data science. Yeah, that's great. This is what I'm thinking. So even in this topic, I talk about the environment data science, right? just because it's based on my own previous experience. So I just want to see I'm a living example for you <laughs> if you're trying to. So because data science, as we mentioned before, is based on the performance base, right? So maybe previous your um, college major is education or some other background, different background. So we work on different backgrounds can uh, if you are interested, you can enroll this uh, data science program. So today, this topic even is about uh, environment data science. Just want to give you a, a little bit of things on like uh, one field, uh, or how to say it's a subfield in data science. Just also based on my own example to show you, you could be successful if you just uh, prepare where for your future. Okay. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Um, okay. Our next question here is how long does it take to complete the full master's program? Um, well, that can, that can vary a bit based on the course load that you choose to take each semester. Um, Dr. Jenny, do you want to maybe speak a little bit to your course planning strategy and, and how you usually approach that with students? So it's all going to be based, like Katie said, it's going to be based on your professional schedule and obligations, your personal schedule and obligations. Some students take the two classes, work full time. Some students take the one class, some take three uh, and work. So it's all going to be on a student case by case basis based on, like I said, your professional and personal experience. Uh, the, the program is geared for a two year completion when that is with taking three classes per semester. Okay, great. Um, this next question is the three courses per semester, including transfer credits. Um, I don't believe it is. I think that would be the, the three courses maximum would be just courses that you, you register for if I'm, I, I believe, is that correct? <laughs> Well, they certainly could be a transfer credit, prior learning transfer credit. So we definitely, if you have any transfer credit that you would like for us to consider in the program, reach out to me uh, and I will walk you through that process. It's all going to be depending on what you are transferring as prior learning credit. Okay, perfect. Um, okay. This last one that we have here is when will the environmental co science course be offered? It's listed under elective courses. Um, so it is an, an elective course in the program curriculum in terms of, of timing of that course. Uh, Dr. Lee, is that something that you have any, any insight into? <laughs> yeah, I think for the application in active courses, I think it should be on the fall. I think the coming fall. I think, yeah, we, at least I, the information I have, we can have the, uh, the data and analytics uh, for environmental science and data analy analytics for social science. Okay, perfect. Um, well, yeah, I'm seeing, it looks like, oh, well, one more just popped up, hang on. Um, okay, <laughs> here's our uh, last question in here. Is that SAS certification part of the MSDS program? Excuse me? Uh, the question is, is an uh, SAS certification part of the MSDS program? Not that I'm aware of. I don't, you know. No. no. I would have to say no on that. Okay. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you everyone so much for, for your participation in, in the Q&A section. Um, 
if we, I, I, if everybody has been able to submit their questions, I'd like to share my contact information with you on the next slide, just in case you don't have it already. Um, if you do have any follow-up questions, um, I'm happy to help walk through those with you. That QR code will take you to my calendar if you would like to schedule a time to talk on the phone, which is usually the the easiest way to, to get your questions answered here. Um, but also we, we work as a team with Ball State, of course, so you're welcome to reach out to myself or the Ball State team if you do have any, any follow-up questions. And I'll just say that I work closely with Katie. So if, if there is a question that, like she said, needs to be answered by a Ball State representative, she will forward that to me and I will be more than happy to help you. And I hope we get to work with you soon. Right. Yeah, welcome to enroll, <laughs> enroll in our data science program. So I will be the instructor for some courses. So. Well, thank you everybody so much for, for joining and, and Dr. Lee, thank you so much for your, your thoughtful presentation. And um, I very much appreciate you taking the time to, to share that with us. And um, yeah, thank you so much everybody for joining and we hope to continue the conversation about the program with you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, it's my honor. <laughs>